Haikyuu Season 4, Episode 14. This is... Damn marching band. Honestly, it's a bit much. Yeah, this. This is a lot. We don't need the memories. I don't need this marching band. <laughs> it just feels so, so painfully familiar. I love how this was set up by the training camp. Their little, would you call it a rivalry? It is now. Smiles all the way down. The most embarrassing part of that is that he, he says all that out loud and then starts crying. That's fair. Fair. It's got a higher thing to aim for, higher ceiling. Kagama's gotta adjust the challenge. Yeah, it's true. True setter test, Kagama. Oh yeah, it's a new opening. I'm gonna guess that in this intro we see a lot of this theme. It feels like this is gonna be a very long section of this tournament. There's too much history, too much setup. Characters are too detailed for it to just be skipped over in like a one episode win. Yeah, very, very heavily featured. All our past obstacles and I guess future obstacles. It's a legacy. They're guarding the gate to the shrine. That was nice. Suddenly he seems like he's a really nice and friendly guy. I don't I don't know. I don't know what to think of Mia yet, really. He's an interesting character. Episode 14, Rhythm. Do seem really powerful and in sync. That's true, the tournament is an excuse to have so many characters we know present for games. Pretty much everyone is here except for the, the losers. They're sure building it that way. Nana's not thinking about that at all though. Neither is Kageyama. They're just thinking about crushing it. There you go. Who's making a statement now? No intimidation. Damn right. This is one of their best strengths. It always has been. They don't melt down. They have their fears and anxieties like everyone else, but it never seems to get in the way of their playing. Or it doesn't snowball in the way that anxiety sometimes do, where the anxiety creates bigger anxieties to the point where you're taking on all this extra information and spending all this extra energy for, for nothing productive. In fact, the more I watch IQ, the more I've been thinking about this in my own life. Like what an amplifier it is to not have that anxiety run away from you. It's kind of like flowing water, like a trickle. If the water continues, it becomes a stream, becomes a river, or you can compare it to a street, a dirt road frequently traveled becomes a street, which becomes a highway. Way. And then there's like an incentive to go that path. It has its own gravity and flow. Same is true for, for thought patterns. I've been wondering what makes the difference. What allows people like the Carcino players to not allow that to happen? If I had to guess, I would say it's not about prevention so much as it is focusing. Like they're act actively programming themselves to just kill, go for it. Kagama's focus, for example, is just on perfect setting. Maybe part of the answer at least is that focus on action, on direct action, not even giving yourself time to ruminate. Little did he know he's partly responsible for this. He inspired it. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's such a cool shot. Pushing each other. Alright, he's an admirer. That makes you like him more. You're booing yourselves! Unnecessary, all of you. Yeah, it's almost as if, like, having a horn in the stands was not playing volleyball. It's almost like you're not part of the team. It's respect. Speaking of ruminations, it's very distracting. Kage will not be phased. He was a little bit phased. <laughs> he still did it though, as expected. I mean, he's, he's the best setter. That's what they say. That's scary. As good as Kagame is thinking about someone on the level with him or better, that combined with a really powerful team. They're playing a very, I don't know how to explain it, symbiotic game. Like there's meaning to each each choice. They'll close the gap. They're not gonna ever miss this. 
Why are you lying? <laughs> You're not thinking about number 10? Or maybe she is. Forget sometimes that volleyball is number one. Number one above everything else. Romance can wait. There, get, get something going. Make yourselves useful now that you have announcers that explain things for you. Oh, you hate to see it. You hate to see it from Tanaka. It hurts. It's not good at all. Right, they're not letting him choose his own shot. We gotta worry about our own our own cheering section. How do you deal with I don't don't even know how you deal with that. I guess just ignore the crowd. This guy. Maybe we should try to stop that stop the service aces. I say from my 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 chair. Oh, I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see the marching band when when Inarizaki loses. That's a good point. They don't feel like Shiro Torizawa, for example. Shiro Torizawa was just a cannon. They were going to come in and fire cannonballs, no matter what happened, no matter the surroundings, the environment, the other team. I don't know how they're expressing this or, or if I'm overreading, but my feeling about this team is that there's meaning behind their choices and what they're doing. They're trying to, like, send messages. There's a reciprocity happening symbolically between the team's actions. There's also an emotion and a, a pride, probably coming from this horn section. Oh, we got reinforcements! Speaking of battle squadrons. How did she know? She's like, how did you put this together? The day Tanaka's sister became a valuable part of the team. Their number one valuable strength. Marketing. There you go. Blast them with the sound of your, your Taiko. Taiko is legit awesome. I saw a performance once and it, it was more impressive than I imagined it would be. <laughs> I like how I like how the mar the marching bands are the central characters of this match so far. You can do both. Yeah, see. This definitely feels more like a Kagiyama Hinata focused arc. I mean, it'll be the whole team, of course, like always, but. You too, huh? It's like Lord of the Rings, <laughs> Return of the King, with all, all the different factors <laughs> flowing into the battlefield. Hinata doesn't really panic. Nah, probably just hit it with his hand. Boop. <laughs> yeah. Use your face, Hinata. Or your hands this time, maybe. That is foot, right? Ref saw it, ref saw it, ref saw it. Yes. I know, I was you once. The thing is, not a, he gets lucky like this, but it's not its not luck. It's like skilled luck. It's, it's just instincts. He just puts himself in that range where luck can happen. Got him. Got everyone. Feels good to see Daichi slam it once in a while. He's so often featured on defense. There we go, catching up. And the accuracy of that is so perfect. Yep. It's a pass through Hinata to get there. The show is always focused on rhythm, but they're like really, really focusing on rhythm in this arc so far. It's cute. <laughs> yes, agreed. They seem like pretty even teams. They just make a lot of noise. It almost feels like a, a mask for an insecurity. It's a lot of flair. Obviously, they're good, but they're coming out like the evil empire. Keep them guessing. All right, they have about a second or two to respond. Stop calling it dual wielding. <laughs> oh, there's a, there's a hack. Oh, damn, Ukai! That is an amazing observation. I never, ever would have noticed that. He's got to tell. Right? For real. Clearly. 
No one can doubt Ukai's commitment. Really went above and beyond for this one. Though it can be... Tells can be manipulated. If you know people know your tell, you have a new, new strategy. And here we go. Was that a... Was that a... What? That's new? For Nish, Nishinoya to be caught off guard. That's... Yeah, we, we got lured in there. Got set up. Remember Shir Torizawa. Kind of dirty tricks do you have in mind? It's working against them. It's being a rhythm. Wow, that was such a great shot. The speed on that. Now they know how it's felt for every other team to play Kagayama and Hinata. Doesn't feel good when it's on the other side. Very familiar. Very familiar. Yeah. Oh, your best skill? Yeah, we, we got that too. We can we can do that. Oh, man. I can't enjoy this happy ending right now. <laughs> and TVs. Maybe we'll appear on one one day. All eyes on this game. Mad Dog stays mad. I wonder how, how would Josai feels watching Carson O play, speaking of which. That detective team that will be a real threat in 10 years. That's Carson O and Nekoma. Is that a hint? That's where it all began. That's such a nice loop back to the beginning. Not a starting off not even being a volleyball player, really. Watching little giants on TV and now everyone's watching him becoming the little giant himself. Their marching band notwithstanding. I like this rival team so far. They feel good in like a clean, pure, interesting way. They're fun. They're dynamic. And they're good in a familiar way, which I actually think is maybe an advantage. It's interesting to see them go up against some of the same skill sets they have. You know, in, in many ways, they're complementary teams. For one, I could definitely see how that's useful for Carlos, you know, in their continued attempts to omnivore other teams. But also, I think that the fact that they're similar and have similar tools makes it more intuitively conceptualizable, digestible for Carcino. Even if they haven't thought about it directly, they share DNA so, and they know themselves. For example, they know through experience when the quicks don't work. They'll be quicker to recognize in others the patterns they have in themselves, I'm guessing. So there's so much to play with in that. I, I can't wait to see what, what concepts they explore through this match.